Regular pivot tables have a handy setting that allows you to show items in the pivot table even if there isn't any data for them. The approach for regular pivot tables and power pivot, pivot tables is different and we'll look at both options in this video. We'll start by looking at how you can show items with no data in regular pivot tables and why you might want to do this. Here I've got a tiny data set with counts by region and department. And notice that finance is the only department with data for every region. So when I insert a pivot table, and we'll just place it up here, we'll look at region, department, and count. I'll just change the layout to turn off the subtotals, and we'll make it a tabular format. I'll insert a slicer, right click, add a slicer, and that'll be hiding behind the pivot table field list and we'll resize it. So now if I select finance, we can see all four regions. But if I select IT, we only have two regions and likewise for operations. And sometimes you might want all regions to be listed, even if there's no data for them, particularly if you're plotting the data in a chart. And if we look at just a regular column chart, you can see this more clearly. So with operations selected, we only have two regions on the horizontal axis. With finance selected, we get all four. And quite often you want all four to remain irrespective of whether there's data for them or not. Now with regular pivot tables, it's easy. We simply select the field and right click, go into field settings, and then on the layout and print tab, show items with no data. And now when I select IT or operations, all four regions remain on the horizontal axis. However, when I insert a power pivot pivot table, it's slightly different. Let's take a look. So I'll insert pivot table from the data model. We're just going to pop it on this existing worksheet and I'll bring the field list over. So here I want to look at my region data. And again, I want regions, department and count. Let's go and change the layout to turn off the subtotals and put it in a tabular format. We'll add a slicer, right click, add a slicer for the department, and we'll pop it in here beside the pivot table. So again, if I select IT or operations, I only have two regions. Finance has all four. The solution for Power Pivot requires a dimension table that contains a unique list of each item that you want displayed. So over here in column K, I've already created that dimension table and it's been loaded to the Power Pivot model. And the next thing I need to do is create a relationship between the fact table that's supporting this pivot table and my dimension table. So let's go in and open up the Power Pivot window via the Power Pivot tab and then Manage. And then I want to go to the Diagram view. And here is my region table that contains the facts. This is my transactional data and the dimension table that I've set up that contains the unique list of all regions. So I'm going to left click and drag region to region. Now I have the relationship between the two tables. I can close the power pivot window. And back in here, I need to remove this region field. This is my fact table. And instead, get the region from my dimension table. So let's pop that in. Next, I simply right click on the pivot table and go into pivot table options. And on the display tab, I want to show items with no data on rows. Notice there's also an option to show items with no data on columns, which I don't need. So I'll click OK. Now if I select IT or operations, all four regions are always present. Now the only difference with this approach is that in the pivot table options, if we take another look on the display tab, this is being applied to all row labels in my pivot table. Whereas in regular pivot tables, I'm applying that setting on a field by field basis. So this is going to show all items with no data for both the region and the department, which in this case is fine, but just something to keep in mind. Let's take a look at another common example. Now, another time you might want to show items with no data is when plotting date related values in a chart. So let's say I want to insert a pivot chart based on this data here. We'll pop it in this cell and I want to look at date and amount. You can see there the chart 
shows the data evenly distributed, even though the dates aren't. Now it makes more sense to plot data based on dates at their actual date intervals. So I've got a table here that contains a unique date for each day in January. And that's my dimension table. I've already loaded it to Power Pivot, but I need to create a relationship between this table and this table in Power Pivot. So let's go in and open the Power Pivot window, go to the diagram view. Here's my data table and my calendar dimension table. I just need to create the relationship, left click and drag. That's done. Let's go back to Excel. I'll we'll get rid of this pivot table and pivot chart. We don't need them anymore. And I'm just going to insert a pivot table from the data model. We'll pop it on the existing worksheet. And remember, the row labels must come from my calendar dimension table. So let's pop that in. We want them in the rows, not the columns. And then the data, which is my fact table, is going to provide the amount. Last thing I need to do is right click and go into the pivot table options on the display tab, show items with no data on rows, click OK. And now when we look at this in a pivot chart, you can see it makes a lot more sense because the data is distributed based on the actual date timeline. Let's get rid of some of these things that are taking up too much room. That's a bit better. We can do some work on the date formatting, but I won't bother for now. The idea is that the data in the chart is based on the calendar month rather than being evenly distributed. Well, I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.